dear learners welcome to the course on renewable energy and our today's topics is the wind energy so last class we have dealt with the biomass that is biofuel production and etc etc now we will go to another sort of non conventional energy sources which is the wind energy now normally the terminology wind is very known term but if somebody says that what will be the definition of wind then we have to think it as basically it's air but how we can really define a little bit more introspection may reveal that wind is nothing but the air is in motion or more precisely the atmospheric air is in motion so that basically wind is so how it gives us the amount of energy that will be a question but before going to that let me discuss a more briefly why wind is caused wind is caused by the convection current in the earth's atmosphere now what is convection current it's a type of current we know but why it is generated and most precisely wind is driven by solar energy because solar energy means the sunlight comes and it makes the hotter atmosphere the different layers have different sort of heating so the pressure level in different air will vary and that basically causes the wind energy the flow of wind basically so what amount of solar energy is required to make this differential sort of heating if that will be our next question then we can say that 2% of the solar energy which comes to earth only 2% that will be enough to make the differential heating so the convection current that is generated in the earth's atmosphere is caused by differential heating of the earth's atmosphere the unevenness of the earth's surface because earth's surface is not a perfect smooth round sort of shape so unevenness of the earth surface and rotation of the earth which we in our classical mechanics course we have solved the problems of the coriolis force and their effects so these all together make the convection current of earth atmosphere and when solar energy is absorbed the heating takes place and that basically causes the flow of wind so if we want to go in a more detailed review using a diagram let's see a diagram i am showing the earth surface the land and sea sea is obviously shown in the blue color whereas land is the normal in you know, a geographic class you have learned that land should be in a brownish sort of color and sea is the blue color so naturally if the uh temperature of the atmosphere very close to sea will be very very low normally but compared to the earth compared to the earth has a higher atmosphere so naturally the pressure air pressure due to the higher temperature will be lower in the land whereas the temperature uh, uh the pressure will be slightly higher close to the sea so we have a differential uh, variation of the pressure from high to low and naturally we know that wind generally flows from higher pressure to lower pressure region so that's why we will get the uh, cool wave coming from sea towards our land and similarly if but the portion close to land has a lower pressure than the far away from the land that means if we go to the vertical direction the air pressure will be higher and similarly if we go uh, vertical direction from the sea the air pressure will be low so we will get a rectangle whose four coordinates are basically diagonally matched the two high pressure regions and two low pressure regions so naturally we will get a circular evolution of the wind flow wind flow from high to low again goes to higher pressure region and then again comes to the lower so it's a circular it's continuous flow 
So that means wind flow is not a discrete shot of that only high to low the pressure is balanced. No. It makes a continuous shot of flow that is shown in this diagram you have find out. So if I go to a slightly more details about the classification of the wind. Now classification of the wind is based on two types. One is normal or general classification for our purpose, day-to-day -day purpose. Another is the scientific classification. So what is scientific classification? That is based on the Beaufort scale. The question will be, what is this Beaufort scale? What it deals with? Beaufort scale is a scale which basically an empirical measurement relates with wind speed, to the observed conditions at sea or land. Again, I am just recapitulating. It's an empirical measurement which relates speed of the wind with the observed conditions at sea or land. Now, Beaufort scale varies from 0 to 12. That means according to the scale, wind has 13 sort of classifications. Now, out of 13, 7 are very, very important. So, in this course, we will detail discuss these 7 points which are in the Beaufort scale. Now, I start with the value of the air at Beaufort scale whose value is 0. So, what is that? It is called calm air. The calm air, the speed is measured approximately 1 km per hour. Now, how you can feel it's a calm air? Take a uh, simple, just take a paper or say some sort of uh, any uh, candle or like those things. Burn it. If the flame rises exactly vertically up to a certain height, it's a calm air. There is no problem with dealing with that. And see, if you go uh, close to the sea, seaside, you will find that sea looks like a mirror. So that will be considered as a calm air. Sea is a clean crystal mirror. And its Beaufort number is zero. Now, I want to increase the speed. Suppose speed is 12 to 19 km per hour. So it's called gentle bridge. And the Beaufort number is significant value is 3. How it looks like? Then leaves, the leaves in the tree, those are in constant motion, those are in flowing, float. And the light flags, if you put a flag in your house, at the top of your house, it will be extended. So, you will find that there is a gentle bridge flowing. And you will find some wavelets in the sea, which we normally find in our close to Bay of Bengal or something in the Arabian Sea, we find that uh, wavelets. So, it's a gentle bridge flowing, very um, uh, comfortable for all of us human beings. And corresponding Beaufort number is 3. Now, I am moving to a moderate bridge. The speed is 20 to 28 km per hour and Beaufort number is 4. What will be a moderate bridge? It causes some dusts are flowing from one point to another point. And small branches of the trees are starting to move. And small sea waves, those wavelets we are finding that become slightly larger. So generally close to the night, you will find these sort of waves uh, at the seashore. You will find those. So that's we call, call it as a moderate bridge. Then I will come to the more fourth significant classification. That is called strong bridge. The speed is 39 to 49 km per hour. Then large branches are in motion. We will find that oscillating branches in the trees and large sea waves are beginning to form. Generally, it is announced that don't go close to the seashore. Keep a safe distance and corresponding Beaufort number is 6. 
that means the alarming situation starts to generate you don't go close to the seashore there is a strong breeze don't go to the roadside too often a large branch may come down on top of your head it may break next i am going to the gale gale speed is 62 to 74 km per hour whose beaufort number is 8 the twigs break off trees it goes on the road and moderately high sea waves you will find of greater length the sea is approaching towards the solid land so that's condition is called gale gale is a scientific term geography persons or the renewable energy persons generally use we don't use but we find there are the larger sort of sea waves that's the beaufort number eight that is the fifth important classification next i will go to storm speed is 89 to 102 km per hour trees are uprooted and considerable structural damage we will find in urban city and rural areas and very high sea waves with long overhanging crates and corresponding beaufort number is 10 so it's an alarming situation fishermen or when the gale is coming fishermen are restricted to go to the sea and the storm there is no chance no provision and the last important thing is the hurricane speed is greater than 118 km per hour there is a complete sort of devastation and sea is completely white with driving spray and that is the highest beaufort number 12 so please remind this beaufort numbers these are very important for making the scientific classification the geography people mostly use it for classification of the different sort of winds but for local people these generally three types of wind the local prevailing and periodic what is local wind that's produced on a local scale due to heating and cooling of local air so normally when at the close to the sunset the earth go getting cooler and you will find a local wind at the afternoon or the evening season it can blow in any direction it is isotropic you can't say that local wind should blow in a particular direction it is random in nature then the second point is the prevailing wind if the local wind blows in a particular direction it's called prevailing and it travels a long distance it's not a short distance wave local wind please remind local wind is a short distance transmission whereas prevailing wind is a long distance transmission and third is the periodic wind it blows from water bodies to land we the most common people who are also not very much familiar with the geography or the scientific technical terms of the wind energy we know periodic wind by the terminology called monsoon and the monsoon forecast we are mostly familiar from our childhood days the monsoon season the rainy season when it is coming the crops the agricultural fields their production depends on the monsoon so periodic wind which blows from water bodies to land are called monsoon they have a periodic nature variation they come at a specific time almost in every year so these are the general classification of the winds this is not based on the beaufort scale now next we will go to the technical details to extract energy we require wind turbine so what is wind turbine it's a rotating machine which converts the kinetic energy into electrical energy that means it's a mechanical to electrical conversion how it works in very brief it extracts the energy from the moving air how it will extract the moving air should be slowed down so that its mechanical energy that means kinetic energy can be extracted this kinetic energy will help to make a something sort of rotation that will be called a spinning shaft so the shaft will be rotated which will be connected to a generator and that generator will produce the electricity so you have to slow down the air based on the air a shaft will be rotated rotation of the shaft will transfer the energy to an electrical generator which will produce the electricity that's in very brief the operation of the wind turbine in just one line
But if we have to go more details, the working principle of the wind turbine. Look, the wind blows towards turbine's rotor blades. There will be different rotor blades, at least three. Rotors spin around using pitch control mechanism. What it? It basically captures the kinetic energy and turns the central drive shaft. Now please, in that case, the rotor and your known electric fan has very similarity but opposite. The rotation direction of the fan and rotor will be exactly opposite. If one rotates clockwise, another will be anti-clockwise. Now, once the central drive shaft that is turned, then you have to go inside the nacelle. I will call what is nacelle is. I will go for the components a little bit later on after two, three slides. Then inside nacelle, there is a gearbox, which converts this lower speed rotation of the drive shaft into the high speed rotation. Why? Because you have to drive a generator. For efficient driving, you have to make high speed rotation. So the role of the gearbox is to make this high speed rotation. Then there is a EO motor, which helps to turn both rotor and nacelle. In which direction? Towards the oncoming wind. Why? In order to get the maximum amount of energy. But if the windy condition is like the storm or like the gale, then you have to apply or a brake in order to stop the rotor, otherwise rotor will be damaged. So there are some conditions when you have to extract energy, when it will be devastating for our mechanical structure. That's why the Beaufort number plays a very crucial role. You have to know what will be the Beaufort number of the wind coming, whether it is damaged, make your mechanical structure damaged or not. And once your motor helps to rotate, to make it turn, then you can get the electric current produced by the generator. How? Because a cable inside the turbine tower is connected to the generator, it produces the electric current. And that current, because its magnitude is lower, so you require a step of transformer which increases the voltage for efficient transmission. So that's all together discusses the working principle of a wind turbine. Now, we have to go to the components of the turbine. There are different components. Number one, obviously, rotor and blade. It's the rotating part which converts the wind energy into mechanical energy. There is a tower which basically raises the rotor to a height so that it can operate at a required speed. If it is very lower height, then it, the wind will be struck and it can't get the enough amount of mechanical energy to produce. Nacelle is a thing which contains gearbox, EO system and electric generator. A high speed shaft is required which drives the electrical generator by rotating at high speed. Rotating at high speed. The low speed shaft which connects the rotor to the gearbox. So high speed shaft and low speed shaft, what is different? High speed shaft drives the generator by rotating at high speed. Low speed shaft connects the rotor to the gearbox. And gearbox converts the rotor motion of lower RPM to higher RPM. So high speed shaft, low speed shaft and gearbox works together. Then there is generator which generates electricity from rotation of shaft. There is a coupling between the main shaft and the transmission. The controller is a self-operating system used in a control system. It's a combination of actuator, sensor and decision elements. There are EO mechanism. It basically turns the nacelle with rotor into the wind using the motors. There is anemometer, wind vane, which basically measures speed and direction of the wind so that you can point the rotor in that direction. And if wind is dangerous, the Beaufort number is very high, you have to stop the rotation. Controller will signal a stop signal when it will be started, when it will be stopped. There is a brake which stops the rotor mechanically, electrically or hydraulically in emergency situation. So these are actually 12 components which are generally parts of a wind turbine.
but in not wind all wind turbines all the components are not required why i will go for the classification but let's go to the analysis what is the amount of power can be extracted that is the equation of motion for this wind turbine so we know that kinetic energy of a particle e equals to half mv square that's from our very foundation level of school course so power of wind what is the power it is the d dt that means the time rate of change of energy and you know mass equals to density into volume volume means area into uh, or the cross section multiplied by distance so mass flow rate is density multiplied by cross section multiplied by rate of change of distance so if you substitute the value of dm dt in the expression of power you will get power is 0.5 that is half rho into a density into cross section into v cube this is the velocity because that equation doesn't give the exact data for practical or experimental purposes then one people beige comes into play and he said that no wind turbine please remind no wind turbine can convert 16 by 27 of kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy turning a rotor and that's known as Bayes law so 16 by 27 that is 59.3 percent now people find that using the base coefficient base power coefficient you can get the almost equal value of the experimental result so the expression of power is modified half into cp which cp is the power coefficient or base coefficient into rho into a into v cube the maximum value of cp is 0.59.3 percent so that is the equation of motion for the wind turbine next we will go to the classification of wind turbine there are two types of turbine vertical axis as well as horizontal axis now i am showing the vertical axis wind turbine look it is placed very close to the ground there is a gearbox a generator which is fixed at the ground a rotor base and the axis fixed pleat rotor blade the rotor tower which is the vertical axis and there is rotor diameter based on which it will rotate the height of the rotor everything is same now rotating axis of the wind turbine it is the perpendicular to the ground that's why it is called vertical axis so you don't require the yaw mechanism and power by wind coming from 360 degree because there is no restriction but once you are making this uh, 360 degree this is an advantage simultaneously you will get the generator and gearbox can be placed at the ground so that means there is another advantage you don't have to put this heavy mechanical and electrical items top of the ground so the structure is simple your mechanism is not required that means it will be cost effective and maintenance is very easy if something some sort of mechanical electrical damage people can go and very easily can solve the problem because it is touched with the ground but again the problem appears because the structure is close to the ground so you can't get all the available wind energy because wind will give you better amount of energy if it is much above the height of ground close to the ground because of the unevenness of the earth surface and so many structural parameters wind is very very have a lower speed so overall efficiency of VAWT is comparatively lower and self start is not possible you have to first start it normal wind can't start to rotate the rotor blades so people that's why they go for HAWT which is the horizontal axis wind turbine it is placed much above the ground so there will be two wind directions we have to consider one is for upwind rotor and another is for downwind rotor nacelle is placed much top gearbox generator everything and tower basically makes a half height in order to place it at the top so its rotating axis is parallel to the ground axis of blade rotation is parallel to the wind flow because of these two points it is called hawt horizontal axis it can cooperate uh, with both upwind and downwind modes it's the most common design if you search the google there are australia so many portions you always use the wind turbines it's able to produce more electricity compared to a VAWT and primarily used for big wind application. 
So the advantage is it obviously has a higher efficiency and you have to neglect the ground effect because you are mounting a high enough, less expensive because once you are going at the top, normally it is not damaged because ground effect is not there and it's self-starting, high amount of speed, it automatically starts to rotate. But again, if you place it above the ground, the maintenance will be very difficult. And EO mechanism is required to turn the turbine towards the wind because it is horizontal, so it can't have the flexibility of 360 degree. So you require an EO mechanism which direction wind is coming and you have to make it face towards the direction. So that is the disadvantage of HAWT. Now there is coming to the wind farm and its site selection. The criteria is the wind source for onshore wind projects. You have to identify the wind class the cutting speed, optimal wind speed for the turbine, you have to evaluate nearby obstacles which causes the turbulence. There is a demand of power you have to measure whether it is really uh, required. The utility scale measurement is required. You have to estimate the cost of production. You have to go for site control. Who will be the ultimate site controller? There may be some sort of dispute. So before making your mechanical structure, you have to make it absolutely clear from the administrative point of view. There are some other potential barriers like the maximum system size that can be interconnected to the grid, maximum size that may need uh, meter to the grid, everything you have to consider. And the zoning and other related barriers because these wind turbines generate a lot of noise. So you can't place it very close to the urban city or rural area you have to find out a vacant position. Now, if it is far away from your actual location, then you have to make a longer transmission line. Again, there will be a cost involved. So you have to optimize everything. And the last part of this course, I will turn to the wind energy conversion. So there are three wind turbine generators. One is DC and two are AC. Out of two AC, one will be AC synchronous, another will be AC asynchronous. So, what are their features? DC is basically a IGBT based, a transformer, controller and power grid. For Shantun DC, the field current increases with operational speed. Balance between wind turbine and drive torque determines the actual speed. Electricity is extracted. Connect the commentator to convert the generated AC power into DC and this requires regular maintenance. Now if I go to AC synchronous generator, the wind turbine generators can take the constant or DC excitations from magnets, electromagnetic generator used. When wind turbine drives the motor, the three phase power is produced and that is connected to the grid via the transformers. In case of fixed speed, the rotor speed needs to be exactly the synchronous speed. Otherwise, the synchronism will be totally lost and you can't get the uniform generation. For fixed speed generators, the random fluctuation of the wind speed basically disturbs the operation. That's why people go for asynchronous AC generator, where a high degree of damping and can absorb the rotor speed fluctuations and drive the train transients. In that case, the stator is connected to the transformer, rotor is connected to the wind turbine through a gearbox. I think I have already discussed the gearbox. And there the 1500 RPM for the 50 hertz utility grid that's generally produced in the three-stage gearbox. Only disadvantage is high, large machine size, lower efficiency, noise and reliability purpose. Otherwise, the asynchronous is very, very important. You don't have to always think about the synchronism of the rotor speed and the wind and everything else. So these are the three general wind turbines. Lastly, we have to consider the advantages and challenges of the wind energy. So what are the advantages? The source is absolutely free, the wind. Energy can efficiently be extracted. No greenhouse gas emission. For HWT, that means horizontal axis wind turbine, land below the turbine can be used for agricultural sectors because it is mounted far above the ground height, so you can utilize it. And it is effective for supplying power at the remote areas. The challenges are electricity generation is not uniform because strength of the wind varies from minute to minute. 
sometimes because of the calm or mine layer so beaufort number if it is below 2 then the uh, power generation may be totally stopped turbines are very noisy you can't push very close to the local area pollution at the time generated at the time of mechanical construction huge pollution so the mechanical outfit once you are generating you have to take the actual permissions from the pollution control board that we are making the mechanical structure for the wind turbine and please give us the permission and turbine blades could damage the local wildlife the lives of the birds are really lost basically for hawt vawt doesn't matter because very close to ground obviously but they are also if birds comes to the agricultural sector for hawt to get their foods from the crops so their lives may be lost because of the rotating blade and that's a situation it's basically creates a havoc problem in the ecosystem but with these challenges we have to, to move towards on the wind energy because the coal and the fossil fuels are basically limited the petroleum is limited so we have to look about the alternative sources so thank you all today up to this in the next class we will go for the tidal